Hello dear friends, in this video we discuss the different modes of retime and scaling and compare them. At first, use this tool only when you want to reduce the speed of a clip below its original frame rates. For example, watch these two projects. In both projects, the timeline frame rate is 30 and you want to reduce the video playback speed to 50%. But in the first case, your file is 60 frames per second. And in the second case, the video frame rate is 30 frames per second. The first one does not need this tool. But for the second one, you should use retime and scaling. The first option is retime process, and you can choose one of the three available modes. Nearest is the fastest processing option, but delivers the lowest quality results. This option duplicates frames and repeats them to create slow motion. If the video has a lot of movement, this mode often produces poor quality results. The next option is frame blend and it does more work on your file and gives a better result. It also duplicates frames to create slow motion but then blends them and applies short results between the duplicated frames to produce smoother motion. It can often create a smoother result than using nearest. The next option is optical flow which produces the best results but also puts the most pressure on the system and is the slowest mode. It generates new frames from the original source frames. As you can see, frame blend and optical flow work well in videos that don't have a lot of movement. But in videos like this, frame blend cannot give good results, and it's better to use optical flow. The second option is motion estimation that will only be applied if the retime process is set to optical flow. The motion estimation includes options that can sometimes improve small tears or stretching caused by optical flow. There are five options in this section and the first four options are available in the free version. You can also use the paid one, but if you are using the free version of DaVinci, any clip using the speed warp will be watermarked. The modes in motion estimation become more advanced and stronger from top to bottom, and the best of them is speed warp. Standard faster and standard better are normal processes that often yield good quality results for normal situations. If you need more power and accuracy, choose one of the enhanced faster or enhanced better. Both of these options require more processing than the previous two options, so they will take longer to process. Finally, Speed Warp will give the best result and uses the DaVinci Resolve Neural Engine. Due to its high processor demands, it takes the longest time to process. As you can see, here are all the four modes in motion estimation that are also available for the free version have worked well. Of course, in standard faster, standard better, and enhanced better, the leaves of the tree are slightly wavy and trembling, which can be ignored. For clips that need more processing, you can use speed warp. Let's talk about scaling. It's better to use an example to explain it. Create a timeline with 4K resolution. Import two files with Full HD and 8K resolution in it. If you set the scaling to project settings, fit, fill, or stretch, the file will be full screen. This means that the Full HD file will be zoomed and the resolution of the 8K file will be reduced to 4K. Of course, if the image is vertical, the results may be slightly different. 
but if you set the scaling to crop, the files will be displayed with their original resolution. It means that the full HD file can only fill a part of the screen and the rest of it remains empty. On the other hand, only a part of the 8K file will be displayed and the rest will be placed outside the screen. The last option in retime and scaling is resize filter. Unfortunately, I could not find much information about it and I'm only telling you my experiences. This option works only when the resolution of the file and the timeline are different or when you want to change the resolution of a file, for example, enlarge it. By default, it is set to sharper. I use it to fix problems that occur when changing the size and speed of a clip. Problems such as creating glitch, making the image wavy, creating shadows or halos around moving objects, and creating green squares on the image. Usually, choosing one of the first four modes will solve the problem. Of course, it depends a lot on your footage. I would be grateful if you share your information and experiences about the tools in this section with me and others. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye.